Welcome back to Philosophy of Mind. Remember back to Descartes, who looked at his conscious experience and thought, this is all I can know with certainty, that I'm having this conscious experience, that I'm sensing, imagining, desiring, willing, thinking. This is what I am. While I'm thinking, I exist. Uh, in today's material, we're looking at the opposite extreme, where the argument is that our conscious experience is an illusion. It's not something that we can know with, ex with certainty. It's something that could be entirely mistaken itself. That it is that we're having these experiences, these feelings of, of consciousness. Uh, and so we're going to look at what it is for there to be a grand illusion. It's important to realize that an illusion is something that is not as it appears to be. So in this slide, there appears to be an equilateral triangle, uh, but there is no triangle on the slide. There are these Pac-Man figures and these angles, but there's no triangle because there is no three-sided figure. There's just an illusion of a triangle. And so the claim with the grand illusion is that visual experience itself is an illusion. It's not as it appears to be. And instead of the hard problem where we try to determine what consciousness is, how consciousness could be physical, we're left with the illusion problem. Why it seems like there is consciousness over and above attention, sensation, thought, and reports about these processes. So um, we have all of those things. Those are the things like in the, in the triangle illusion that actually exist. Uh, and then in addition, there appears to be conscious experience, but there is in fact not conscious experience. That's the grand illusion that we'll be looking at in the material. And think about the responses to the hard problem that we talked about, the three different responses. The Mysterians are like the Cartesians. They're the dualists. They're thinking the hard problem cannot be solved. And it cannot be solved because consciousness can, in principle, be abstracted, be separated from physical. It, there are two things, not one thing. And consciousness is not possible to be investigated in terms of the physical. The second scientist response is that consciousness does exist, it's not an illusion, uh, and uh, we can try to solve the hard problem. We can figure out what consciousness is in physical terms by looking at the easy problems, and then we'll eventually figure out the solution to the hard problem. The eliminativist is advocating that consciousness is a grand illusion, so the eliminativist is the one who is suggesting that our experience is not as it appears to be. There's no hard problem. We don't have anything extra that's consciousness that we need to explain. What we need to explain is just why it seems that we have consciousness. So it's just the illusion problem that we need to try to explain. So look then at what consciousness is supposed to be. So everyone agrees with what consciousness is supposed to be, consciousness is supposed to be, is thought to be a show in the way that Descartes suggested. And there are these three features that consciousness seems to have. So the first question to ask yourself is whether consciousness seems to have these three properties. So the first property, consciousness is richly detailed. So does it seem to you that your conscious experience right now has lots of detail. Do you see lots of different uh, sensory stimuli in your visual experiences that combined with auditory stimuli, um, tactile stimuli, imaginings that you have? Does your consciousness seem to have lots of, of detail and um, integrated detail? Second, are these details either in or out? Is there a fact of the matter about what you're conscious of right now? This is related to uh, Dennett's claims in our earlier material that there is no fact of the matter about consciousness, that there are just lots of different uh, reports that we can make about our conscious experience. All we know is what's coming in and what's going out, and there's no fact about what is exactly going on, what's in consciousness. Because if it's an illusion that there is an in consciousness, then, uh, then you can't say for any particular detail, any particular sensory stimulus, whether it's in or out of consciousness. 
And then third, uh, it may seem, if consciousness is a show, that consciousness represents the world, that your conscious experience is about something, that my conscious experience is about this room, it's about uh, the world that I'm experiencing. Um, even if that world is part of my body, the pain in my body is also part of the world that consciousness might represent. Um, or my thoughts, also part of the world that consciousness represents. So does consciousness represent a world? This may be how consciousness seems. This, you know, argument is that this is how consciousness seems. So ask yourself whether it does seem that way. And then, uh, and then whether that's a mistake. Is consciousness not, does consciousness not have these three features? To try to uh, give you some reason to doubt that consciousness is a show in this way, that consciousness is richly detailed and, uh, and representational in this way, there are various forms of evidence. One is the many Marilyns. I've got a picture here of all of these Marilyns. If you went into a room and saw a wallpaper full of many Marilyns, you would not be able to see all of the many Marilyns in detail at the same time because how your eye works is that it foveates around your environment, taking in different details from different parts of your, uh, your surrounding world and then you're able to interpret what's in the world based on those different um, saccades, eye saccades as your eye moves around the world. Uh, but it seems to you, it may seem to you when you come into a particular room that's wallpapered with Marilyns, it may seem to you that all of those Marilyns are richly detailed at the same time that you walk in and you see everything at once in detail. And you might try this sort of experiment in any room that you go into. Go into the room and ask yourself, am I seeing everything at once? Does it seem like I'm seeing everything at once? Again, the visual science of it is that you can't be experiencing, actually getting sensory, detailed sensory information of all of the parts of the room at once, um, and that's an illusion. So, so do, or do you have the illusion, um, and, and, and if so, how are you going to think about it? The other experiment that you can run for yourself is the blind spot experiment. And if you haven't done it already, you should go to page 57 and do the blind spot exercise. I had mentioned uh, blind spots uh, earlier when I was looking at um, the, the blindsided visual uh, scotomas for, for, uh, for that material. And so, you know, for ourselves, we have a blind spot, and um, and you can use that exercise to try to uh, identify it and, and recognize where your blind spot is. And then you can ask yourself what your experience is of that blind spot. Uh, is it uh, is it simply missing information, or does it does it seem like it's filled in in some way? There are two interpretations of blind spots in many Marilyns. The first is the show interpretation. So this idea that there is are these three features of consciousness is related to the idea that consciousness is a show, that it's richly detailed and, uh, and, and represents the world. And the show interpretation, argued by uh, Ramachandran, is that the brain fills in the gap with rich visual information. And that includes the gap that you experience with the many Marilyns. You come in and you see one richly detailed Marilyn and the brain fills in the other Marilyns. So you have an experience of rich detail because the brain fills in those details. Same with the blind spot, the brain fills in the, the gap. Um, that is of the missing information. So you have an extra show that's filled in. And Ramachandran supports this with uh, experiments where he presents a blank space surrounded by lots of, of, of snow, and the brain eventually fills in that, um, that gap where there is then a, a, a consistent array of snow. Uh, and so he says, well, you know, this is, this is what happens, that the brain is filling this in in order for us to have a seamless experience of the world. 
Alternatively, we might adopt a story interpretation of these visual gaps. And this is consistent with the eliminativist grand illusion hypothesis, and that's the brain does not need to fill in this missing information. There is no missing information that's filled in. The brain simply is interpreting the stimuli and drawing conclusions that, um, that you don't need to fill in this extra bit, you just need to know that, or, or think about this visual field as being all snow, uh, that that makes the most sense. And so what the brain does is tell you a story about the world, which is that it's all snow and there's no extra filling in of an image. There's no extra detail in consciousness. Um, and similarly with the many Maryland's interpretation that you just see one Maryland, you get information about one Maryland, uh, you don't fill in all the other Maryland's, you simply interpret the room as being filled with Maryland's. Uh, and that's all you need in, in, in order to interpret and explain this phenomenon.